is Dave Evans, um, the groundwater uh, science technician for Environment Canterbury, and I'm just going to run through uh, the, how to collect a representative groundwater sample via three volume purge technique and low flow sampling. Here we are to demonstrate collecting a low flow sample from a well. So here we have the well, um, good wellhead security, nice concrete base, sealed. First step, recording the water level, lower your dip probe, whether your dip probe beeps or has a light or a sensor or whatever it's got, it's the same deal. That's your water level there, bring it up, read it, 2.1235, 2.5 metres to water. So record that now before you forget. For low flow purging, the idea is uh, not to disturb the water column as much as possible. You want to lower the pump at a nice steady rate, so you need the screen information as well. This well is 24 metres deep, the screen is 22 to 24 metres. Now if we can lower the pump to 23 metres, we're right in the zone we want to be. Set up the pump. Um, and then establish the, um, the drawdown rate and the flow rate of the pump that's required. So your fittings are nice and clean. Get your flow cell for your field meter. Get a nice lemon of flow coming out of it. Initialise the system. Now, any pump, there's lots of different pumps you can use to do this. Uh, there's MP1s, there's 12 volt pumps that are adjustable. The key is whether you can get it in the screen and adjust the flow. We lower our dip tape back down. This is when it's handy if you've got a pump with a screamer or a sound. Just to flow the soap so your drawdown is not an issue. But here you can tell the water level is not dropping. You hold it just at the water's edge. It should, should stay where it is. Each well will be different depending on the size of it, um, the yield, the condition of it. So it's just a matter of adjusting that flow when you can. So it's not drawing down. And now we just uh, record the uh, flow rate of the pump and establish how long it will take to flow through a complete drive train, so all the tubing. This tubing is 40 metres of tubing, it's about 18 litres of water. So the advantage of having a manifold like this is you can split your flow apart so you have a nice uh, even flow for your flow cell. And Another flow you can adjust for your sample point depending on what you need and then if you had a really high flow you can attach a purge line here and run that off. So you can run the pump at full, full, full pump without having to alter the pump rate when you collect your sample. So now we're going to record the flow rate so we can calculate how long we need to pump it before recording our manual field measurements throughout the purge. So you've just got one flow which is this one go start. So whether you fill a 5 litre container or a 10 litre container or whatever, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to go to one, one litre this time around. So that's uh, 23 seconds for one litre. We've got 18 litres in the drive train. So that's 414 seconds to fill the entire tube or 6.9 minutes, so say 7 minutes. 
Right, so when you're calculating how long you need to pump the well for and when to take your field meetings, you need to know the volume of the drivetrain, that's the hosing, and the flow rate to calculate the time. So every time you've done one, one volume, record your reading, and once you've got those two consecutive readings, then you, uh, you've got a representative sample of there. So we've calculated our uh, time to measure our field meters, uh, make sure the water is flowing through your flow cell the whole time, even if you have optical sensors. One well purge volume, so we'll call it one drivetrain volume, was uh, 18 litres. Pump and duration was seven, seven minutes. Um, pump volume for this instance isn't quite so in important, so we're just going to go 7 minutes, 14 and 21. And then we record these, so I like to do dissolved oxygen, because I find it's the last one to stabilise. Temperature is 16.8, pH 7.44, and dissolved oxygen milligrams per litre is 4.02. Record it on by your watch and record your time every every seven minutes as required or set the meter to log every six, six, seven minutes and then you can go away and do something else and come back. And then the next volume we'll put down here and then the next one here and you just keep repeating that until they're stable. And once they're stable then you can record all your field measurements down here. So the only one we have thus far is the depth to water which we recorded at the start. And further seven minutes has passed. Temperature is now 15.6 degrees. pH is still 7.44. And dissolved oxygen is 3.84. Uh, so, so the readings are changing. So we continue to wait. Final reading, 15.6. The temperature, pH 7.45. Dissolved oxygen, 3.78. So they are within our our limits. Okay. So the last field meetings uh, readings were uh, within the limits required by NEMS. Temperature is plus or minus 0.2 degrees Celsius. Conductivity plus or minus 5 percent, less than 100 microcentimeters per centimeter, and the pH is plus or minus 0.1 pH unit. Yep. So the first thing I want to do is put in a new filter. Now whether you use uh, reu uh, reusable cartridges like this or the little yellow one-use disposable ones is up to you. I find these work better as they're a larger surface area and you can get more filtering for a paper. It's just a matter of making sure things are clean. Rinse. So we don't need that flowing now. We'll just sweep these up a bit. Now the minimum requirements of NEMS for flushing the filter is 20 mils. Your water's pretty clean like we have here. Let's do the whole thing. So that is that done. Now I don't have to, have to think about it. These are our bottles, nutrients, needles, tops, and microbes. So you label the bottle with the well number or sample ID, depending on your own specific systems, date, and time is very important for micro samples as they need to be analysed within 24 hours of collection. Give it a bit of a shake for a rinse. Uh, 
Uh, of course, it's a sterile container, so make sure you do not touch the inside of the lid or the container itself. It doesn't need to be rinsed. It's simple to lift off. Make sure there's no drips or anything getting in the container from anywhere else. Leave a little gap at the top. Top bottles, same at the top. These samples get field filtered to remove any suspended solids that may interfere with the analysis. So this is the nutrients. When you fill it, I find if you just hold it off to the angle a bit, so no drips drip in the bottle that you don't want, a nice even flow. The nutrient bottles fill right to the top. There's no preservatives in there, so you don't have to worry about spilling those out. Like the metals bottles do. They have a Middle or two is sulfuric acid, I think, in the bottom. Nitric acid, sorry. And let's fill these up to the shoulder. And a quick mix. And then we put them in the chili bin for storage for the day. Chili bins are the right size for the amount of samples you're going to collect for the day. They're going to allow room for ice. These ice uh, gel packs are very good, they stay frozen for a lot longer than normal ice. Good quality chili bin as well, it's worth its weight in gold. So, the last thing we do before we send the samples off is fill out the chain of custody form. Uh, so, it's a pretty simple procedure just uh, your name, the reference of the program that you're doing whatever that may be for us it's groundwater monitoring quarterly north um, contact details uh, sample dispatch much the same again just who dropped them off whether it's so for this case it's the same sampler as the sample dispatch it might change depending on your circumstances additional notes um, you might want to include things like samples were too turbid for field filtering or um, you want to add a additional test that's not in your original quote things like that anything that pops up it's usually just something that may also may affect the um, sample itself and then this is for the lab We're down here so you took the type of water groundwater river stream lake or coastal groundwater for us samples have been field filtered yes and then just the sample name date and time and test required so I've written as per quote. So once you've filled that out, I'll place it into a sealable plastic bag to put in with your samples, make sure it doesn't get wet, seal it up. Place it in with your samples and what was the temperature? 7.1 and the range you accept is? Um, under 10 degrees okay. Thank you.